Hi everyone, we begin this week's table talk coming back to Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 7. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Can you believe that we've been working on family faith formation for a whole month now? Actually, if you count the introduction, it's a little bit over a month, five weeks to be exactly. Repetition is a key to learning, but it can also be really boring if we repeat stuff over and over again and a little annoying. I think this week, though, is a good week for us to pause and reflect on all the things that we have gone over so far. In this way, hopefully we can get a little bit of repetition that's not too annoying, but help us to remember the content and the concepts that we've already talked about so they can be implanted in our hearts and minds. Perhaps some of what we've covered already, if you'll remember, we talked about praying in a variety of ways throughout the day, expanding our definition of prayer, practicing the discipline of gratitude, and reading scripture might be things that are second nature to you. Or perhaps it's a struggle and it already feels like it's way too much to do all of these things and to remember it all. This week, as we come back to this scripture from Deuteronomy that was in our introduction, we remember that our goal was to make family faith formation something that was really easy, as simple as walking and talking with your family. So allow me to share a story with you from my family. A few weeks ago, before school started, Russ took Michael to the barber to get a much-needed haircut before school started. The next morning, as Michael was getting around and getting started for the day, he was having trouble opening up his uh, children's allergy medicine, which comes in those little like blister packs where you have to push peel back and then push a pill through. As he was having trouble with it, he got really frustrated, so he came out to the kitchen and asked if Russ could please help him because he couldn't figure out why he couldn't get it open. And he was lamenting that just the day before he had no trouble getting those allergy pills out of there. And so he was really frustrated saying, but I know I could do it yesterday. So Russ agreed to help him. And while he was working on getting it out, Russ said, you know what, Michael? I know exactly what it is. Do you know who Samson is? Michael just looked at Russ completely confused. In fact, he was so confused that I think he forgot to be frustrated and upset that he couldn't get the medicine out himself. He just stood there looking at Russ like, who is Samson and what does he have to do with my allergy medicine? Russ smiled and said, I bet mom knows who Samson is. Now I need to pause here because I gotta be perfectly honest with you. I hadn't even had my morning coffee yet and I was a little bit confused myself. I thought, I've never met this guy, Samson, and I have no clue what Russ is talking about. But when Russ said, I bet mom knows, it clicked in my brain. Samson is someone from the Bible. So I told Michael, Samson is someone from the Bible, and he had really long hair, and that long hair was a source of his strength. But if his hair would ever get cut off, he wouldn't have his strength anymore. And that's exactly what happened to Samson. He got tricked by a woman and she cut his hair off and he lost all of his strength. So I think Russ was just joking with you a little bit that maybe because you got your hair cut yesterday, you don't have as much strength today to get your medicine out like you did yesterday. And then we all kind of laughed a little bit and just moved on with our days. You see, friends, this wasn't a formal lesson plan. It wasn't a planned out family devotional time where we sat down together and read the Bible and talked about the story of Samson and what it means for us. But when we pray regularly, express our gratitude to God, look for Jesus in the course of our day, and seek to read the Bible, talking about the things of faith and the stories of faith in our day-to-day -day comes really easy and naturally to us. We don't have to think about it or plan for it or Google online some formal lesson plan to teach our children something or to share something with our spouses or one another. Even if we aren't perfect at our prayer or remembering to look for God throughout the day or our Bible reading or our discipline of gratitude, I can't begin to tell you how many times throughout the course of just everyday lives and conversations, silly things and important things with our kids, we've been able to refer to a story in the Bible or some tenant or understanding of our faith life. After a while, it just becomes second nature. Our conversations about problem solving and household management with our spouses and our kids about school and activities become opportunities for us to express our faith. And before we know it, we're talking about the things of faith without even thinking about it. 
and we're talking about and looking and sharing together about the things of Christ when we're at home, when we're away, when we rise up, and when we lie down, just like Deuteronomy tells us. Perhaps diving into Bible reading, you forgot about praying this past week, or in expressing your gratitude, you forgot about seeking God, or maybe you forget to do all of it in the course of the day because life and work just get too busy. It's okay. Be encouraged and keep trying. If you read one Bible verse, that's prayer because you're communicating to God by listening to God. And if you give God thanks, that's remembering to seek God because you sought God out to give God the thanks that you wanted to give him. If you're struggling and striving to incorporate the practices in your life, then you're already well on your way because you're trying and you're struggling with it. And as we do that, our faith will continue to multiply and we'll find that it becomes easier and easier to include faith formation within our families and then with our friends and eventually even with strangers. As a supervisor, I once had told me at the end of every conversation, friends, just keep on keeping on. See you around the table, Pastor Laura.